Hello. Today we're doing something special because of the season. These are wonderful cherries. Uh, you can see they are the very best you can buy at this moment in time. And I have washed them incredibly thoroughly with soap, not detergent, with soap. Then I've used a vinegar solution in here to keep rinsing them and I have soaked them back in the, the vinegar in order to get everything off them, okay? Right, now I'm gonna put them back in here and I'm gonna process them. Now, I know they sell a lot of gadgets for making the, um, I've dried them very, very thoroughly, by the way. Um, they sell things to poke them out. They sell things to clip them off. My goodness me, there's an awful lot of gadgets for doing cherries and I must have bought most of them because I find cherries very difficult to process. But this time, I'll show you a little trick that I saw in the middle, believe it or not, of a movie. And I've never seen this on a cooking program. I've never seen it written down anywhere. And I wish someone had told me about it a long time ago. So, I don't want my stalks, but watch. You just roll them. Now they literally open in front of you and you can just pop these out. Now that was easy, wasn't it? And it's quicker than doing the other way. I'll show you again. You roll them and you just open them up. They just open and the little seed pops out in your fingertips. So. While I'm doing this, I'm just gonna tell you about these. This is a nice quality cognac, a champagne cognac, and this is gonna do justice to these very beautiful fruit. And I've got a nice Armagnac bottle because I did them in Armagnac last time because I could find a really good Armagnac. But um, you need one that has a nice big hole. Can you just have a look at the stopper size? It's no good with a little tiny hole like this. You won't get them in very readily. Okay, and it's quite important to get them in. So, I'm going to sit and do the, or stand and do these. You're going to eat one, aren't you, Paul? Are they good? Mm. Yes, yes, I thought they would be very, very good. Sampling, yeah. No, 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 I've been a good girl. I'm all right about sampling nothing. Mm. It's stopping once I try them. <laughs> and you can add sugar to this recipe and absolutely everyone does. But I don't have a sweet tooth. Paul doesn't have a sweet tooth. And I usually add a little creme de cassis when I pour it out in my glass. And you can add a sweetener, you can add a syrup, you can add whatever you like later. So we don't do the sugar part. OK. But we do do the fruit part. You don't want fruit that is overripe. And obviously you don't want anything that's got bad bits in it. But basically... This very high quality alcohol will preserve. Yes, you can do one with um, vodka. And the vodka one is very nice and is much more common. But this is my favorite. <laughs> and uh, once it gets to dreary, hmm, I suppose the most dreary month of all will probably be January. And it's cold and it's miserable. This is delicious. Serve it in little tiny weeny glasses. I've actually got some Georgian glasses and they're little tiny things like that. And you don't need very much of this. And I just sip it for about three quarters of an hour and it is absolutely heaven. And we have never tasted anything that has been made by a factory that tastes anything like this. So it is worth doing, but you can only do it when it's season for these wonderful 
wonderful cherries. Let's start popping them in the top. The actual cherries become very alcoholized, but they're quite nice if you mix them um, with a sweet cream or put them on top of ice cream or any sort of small amount of alkalized cherry is very good. They actually do keep some of their color, but most of it will go into the drink. If I turn it that way, you can see you can't better, can't you? There. I think about half full is what we're aiming for. Probably another one because there's a little dip that side. A nice quality Armagnac is also really, really good with them. Now I'm going to just get my fingers a bit dry. You take a funnel, nothing complicated, and you open your bottle. Okay. Mm, I really do like a really nice cognac. Okay. This is a good quality one. So this was a bottle of how many? How, how many? 50 bills at 40%. 50 mils, yes. Well, I think you'll find they're all about, that's half a litre. And this is 700 mils. And so you can see what you'll end up with. That's quite a good fit, I think. You happy with that? And then you just put the plug in it. And that's it. We're not asking you to do anything clever. But I do have a small bottle left. I don't know if I can squeeze them through that thing. And I do have another bottle. So I might be able to put those through the same system. And we'll try. I wanted you to just see, this is last year's. As you can see, I've been enjoying it. And it really is absolutely wonderful. In fact, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take those out of this bottle. I'm going to store them in another jar because there's virtually nothing left. And I'm going to use this one with this here. And so we'll probably get a second one. So we'll have two sitting in a cupboard waiting to be used. And we won't be using them through the summer. This is a, this is a winter warmer. About six months, yeah. yeah, but probably you could drink it after three or four, but we leave it six, don't we? And just about the time when you've forgotten what a cherry tastes like. <laughs> but these are amazingly beautiful cherries. And if you happen to have um, a cherry tree, then there are so many things you can do with that. And this is one of those that should be on your list. Because even if you don't like it, my goodness, give that as a present to somebody at Christmas. They will be so pleased but you will expect to sweeten them in the glass. But I prefer to do that to putting sugar in now and deciding in advance how much sugar everybody's condemned to. I think sugar and salt and things like that should be added individually because everyone likes it different. As you can see, if I move it that way, I'm just filling this one back up. So we'll have two nice ones to go through the winter months. And we're filling it up this time with Armagnac. Armagnac and uh, Cognac are basically very, very similar. They come from different regions in France. And um, this one is distilled uh, twice and that one's once. Uh, it, uh, the story is that it's because um, the Scots came over and uh, medieval times and they taught them that it tastes better because that's what they were doing with their whiskies. So that's why they evolved into that. But in doing that, um, you lose some of the character. This 
has a more oaky, more, more distinctive flavour. They are slightly different, but they are both a grape product and the, the myth is that the Armagnac is cheaper. Well, you can get cheap Armagnacs, you won't get cheap Cognacs, but a good quality Armagnac is just the same sort of price. There you are, that'll do, won't it? <clears throat> it's the same sort of price as you would um, pay for a Cognac. And in fact, I think some of them are even more. Right, as you can see, Paul's open this one. All right. I'm going to use the funnel because if I don't, you know what will happen. Oh, wow, that was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, that is absolutely perfectly filled. Mm, my goodness me. No, that belongs on there. So where's the one that I... Oh, that one's over here. Right. So the other thing that's important is to make certain your lid is tight fitting. If it's not tight fitting, your alcohol will evaporate. Alcohol is a volatile thing. It leaves. So that's important. And just to give you a little idea, you can pick these up in, in little fancy, what would you call them, one euro shops and that sort of thing. And... They usually come in a little set, but if you were to decant these into these, you get quite a few out of them, put a little bow around it, and they make a very nice gift at Christmas. Okay, see you soon. <laughs>